And he says, and this is the gate of heaven. This is the opening. This is the porthole. This is the gateway for heaven and earth to make a connection. Jacob has got a divine revelation. Oh, that God would anoint his people to stop preaching yesterday's messages off of somebody's book without having enough experience to preach what they got by revelation. Because then we would stop being like Moses. When Moses uh, said he saw the hind part of God, he only saw where God had been, not where God was. We need to hear, we need to get a revelation of our job, revelation of our career, revelation of our purpose in marriage, revelation of our purpose in life. And lots of people have a revelation that this is called church. But the only thing they didn't wait long enough before God, they didn't stay in the dream long enough, they didn't realize that God's in the dream and God's in the house that he says is called Bethel. But if you only have a revelation that this is church, you think you're wasting your time. You think you can control the events. See, this is just church. I've been going to church since I was a little kid. I know it, you know. I know everything about it. You ain't got a revelation of Jesus. All you got to do, all you got is a revelation of a denomination. You got a revelation of a church. You have never gotten a revelation that God's in that place. In Jacob's life, he didn't just go up and say, oh my God, this is the house of God. He said, and I didn't know God was in there. So all of a sudden now, Jacob realizes that heaven is infiltrated earth. Are you getting this? Yeah. And so all of a sudden there's this, and whenever, oh, I got, I got to give it to you. Whenever there's a sense of God's presence in the house, demonic forces are on a run constantly. They are always being pushed out. They are always being expelled. They are always being pushed away. <clears throat> Hello. Yeah. When there's heavenly open avenues of God dropping in, talking, sending angels as messengers to constantly bring a message with an assignment. Angels always bring assignments. Are you hearing? Here's a sign. The sign is this, that angels were ascending and they were descending. Now, what does that mean? Angels have a great role in the abiding presence of our walking, living our lives in total surrender to his lordship. Hebrews 1, 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Angels are ministering spirits. You're going to see this. When God shows up and he opens up the heavens, there's always angels with it. Why? Because God rides on the wings of angels. He actually walks on the wings of angels when God comes. Oh, you say, whoa, where'd you get? Let me show you. You got to read it. Psalm 104, verse 3. God says, it says right here that God walks on the wings of the wind. He walks on the wings of the wind. See it there? Look at the, the, he, who walks on the wings, the latter part of that verse, of the wind. Can you hear this? Wind is referred to there in the Hebrew as the angelic beings. Oh, can you get a picture today? Here are these massive in angels. Gabriel and Michael and all of these guys and they have their wings out and if God's feet are bigger enough to be the footstool of the earth can you imagine the picture of God himself uh, coming down uh, through the celestial eons of time riding on the wings of angels and walking on their wings uh, in the wind uh, to visit down to Jacob that's not a little thing that's not 
just another surface. John 1, 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Dwelt means tabernacle. Jesus tabernacled among us. He was the house of God made flesh. The place where God lived. Jesus was the house of God. When he came to the earth, he brought God in the house. Oh, Jesus. You say, I'm not sure. I had John 1, 49, 51. The house of God was not a building, but a person. Hello? You've got to have a continual revelation. Yes, you've got to realize this structured building is a house of God called. And yes, you've got to have a revelation that he's in the house. Yes. And you've got to have a, a, a revelation that he's here to talk. John comes in. And John the revelator. Come on. Right that John would be able to see this. John says, oh my God. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the house of God. Oh my God, if he's the house of God, that's got to be the ultimate. Jesus says, no. Paul comes back and says it too. No, that's not the ultimate. Watch, I'll show you. Jesus is going to leave. Oh no, the house of God left. Oh no, oh no. John 14. John 14. God's initial fulfillment of the house of God was Jesus, the tabernacle of God on planet earth. But watch, look at this, John 14, 16. I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide the tabernacle with you forever. Okay, now we got the, 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 the house of God left. And the house of God sent the Holy Ghost to live in uh, somewhere. Further, Paul kind of furthered this thing along. He said, and, and he gave some advancement to the revelation. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Put it on the board. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are? Yes. Come on. Do you not know? Do you not know when the temple of God left, he left one on the earth? And that temple is you and I. And it says, present yourself blameless, holy unto the Lord. For you and I are the temple of God. Yes. We're the place where God said, I'm going to open up the heavens. I'm going to create a ladder of angelic messages. And I'm going to start communicating in my house. Yes. And you're going to come to church one day and the scales are going to drop off. And you're going to say, oh my God, I am the house of God. Ephesians 2, 19. Read it. Look at it. Therefore, you are no longer outsiders, exiles, migrants, aliens. Oh, could I talk about it? Excluded from the rights of citizens. But you now share citizenship with the saints. Come on. God's own people consecrated and set apart for himself. And you belong to God's own household. You are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And Christ Jesus is the cornerstone of your life. Come on, let's go on. In him, in him, in him, the whole structure is joined, bound, and welded together, not with steel, not with cement, not with wood, but by a marvelous anointing of the word of God and taking men and women and sewing them together to make one habitation to the glory of God. Harmoniously. It continues to rise. The building is rising and grow and increase into a holy temple. In the Lord, a sanctuary dedicated, consecrated, and sacred to the presence of the Lord. Oh, we the church, 
The redeemed are the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit, the eternal dwelling of God who's in our life. The house of God is the picture of God's intention for your life and for everything that he wants to do. He wants a house where he'll dwell with angels that are sending and descending assignments and heavens are open over a people who abide in him. You see, God don't want to open the heavens over Baltimore. I know we pray that way and, and we've seen it and I got to tell you, saints, it's like second best. Because when God opens the heavens over a city or over a particular church, the people in the church many times never get a revelation and they never know what God did. You see, I've been in services where eyes were opened, blind, legs healed, people with crippled get up by the thousands. I've been in meetings all over the world. And it's so sad to realize that when God shows up and he moves like that, the very people sitting there watching will go away going, oh, well, what's for dinner? Because you've sat so long without God in a revelation of who he is. I'll tell you what we need to do. Some of us need to clean the ladder off. Some of us need to check the rungs on the ladder. Maybe some ladder rungs have been broke off. And maybe the angelic host is not getting through. And maybe we need to get a revelation. Abiding means staying connected to him. Staying connected by affection and by service to him. It was great to have God open the heavens here in 1997. But that was a practice. That was just a dress rehearsal. It's a picture of what he wants to do over again. Because he said to me, he wants to do it in you. He wants to do it in me. He wants to do it in you every day. That you no longer wait for the heavens to open over a people. But you're saying, God, open the heavens over me. So that I get a revelation of who he is. And if you get a revelation of who God is, you will never trade it for somebody's stupid offense or an opinion. Or somebody's tug of war on your soul. Even Lucifer can't contend with that. Because he can't trick you to deny what you know to be real. Because once God has showed up you will never be the same and that's why I can tell you when I got saved I really got saved and I don't come to church just to come to church when I first took this church over in 1983 it was a little handful brother John came with me and he said this about me Mel was here he said, Brother Bart's not coming up here to learn how to pray. Because I didn't come up here to find prayer. I came up here because I already had prayer. I didn't come up to Baltimore for the heaven to open. It had already opened over my own life. And anybody who's had an open heaven will not get hung up in stupidity of trivial nothingness and want to contend with foolish flesh because you've never met him. You've never had an encounter with him. But if he ever opens the heavens over you, you won't care about who's right. You won't care about who's wrong. You won't try to prove your flesh to be something. You will realize, oh my God, I'm a man with unclean lips in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Woe is me. Come on, saints. We have fellowship. Come on. We're not visiting. Today, new members join the church in all the right way. You're not here to visit. This is your home. This is the home that you bring the glory in. See, you got the glory. Stop 
Stop spilling it out through your carnal life and just begin to bring it in when you come. Bring in that joy. Bring in that song. Bring in that peace. Uh, when you come, uh, let the tabernacling process that you had this morning with your God. Uh, come on, God. Uh, we're going in to join the rest. Uh, we're going to the house of God. Uh, I'm going to bring the anointing. I'm going to bring the glory. I'm going to bring the joy. I'm going to bring healing up. I'm going to bring miracles. Every one of you in this house. The tabernacle of God is with you. Put your hands up and tabernacle with your God. Tell him you love him. Tell him you love him. You're here today. You say, Pastor, I need to get set free. I just need to get loosed. I need to get set free. I know that I have not lived and conducted my life as though it is the temple of God. But I'm going to change today because I understand it's not by my works, but it's by the grace of God. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And today I'm going to make a change in my life. If you're standing here right now and you know you need deliverance out of this thing, you need a breakthrough prayer, you need a real breakthrough prayer, I want you to be bold and desperate and hungry enough to do this. When I say this word, I want you to get up and come. If you're standing, I just want you to come now when I say it. If you need that delivering prayer, you need that breakthrough anointing, come right now. Right now. It's your only chance. Right now. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. 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 Jesus, lose them now.